and welcome everyone, uh, everyone who can see and hear us. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure, but I'm hearing that uh, Zoom has had technical difficulties along the way. So uh, anyway, we'll uh, we'll move forward with the service and welcome to everyone who's able to be here, uh, both now live and who will be with us as we uh, when we uh, they view it on uh, recorded on online. Um, for uh, there were some announcements that needed to be shared. Um, so uh, I think uh, look through the list here. I don't see uh, Romy or Naomi. Just to let folks know that the maple syrup um, is uh, is ready to be picked up, and you can be in touch with uh, with Romy and Naomi uh, for for that if you'd like to pick that up. We will try and have the virtual coffee time again following service. There were quite a number of folks who stayed for that. So after the service, if you want to leave uh, and head out and do things that you need to do, that's great. But if you would like to stay around and um, and uh, um, uh, join in the coffee time, we'll, we'll put you in breakout rooms and you'll be able to do that. And Lee, I'm going to unmute you. Go ahead, Lee. I just wanted to let people know that, uh, and Mary Lou has announced it every week that we are selling the gift cards. You can arrange with her to pick them up and drop off your money to her. Yesterday, I deposited a check for $2,575, and that's our commission from our sales of gift cards over about the last year. So keep it up because it really is a very easy way for us to um, keep our balance up in our bank account. That's it, thanks. Thanks, Lee. Uh, <clears throat> just to remind folks, as you're seeing on the screen here, the ways of, of continuing to make offerings to the church and the ministry that we're, we're doing right uh, at this point in time. You can continue to drop envelopes at the church. Folks are taking advantage of that. Uh, E-transfers to the church's email address, and that's a wonderfully secure way of making donations to Pearl Harbor Woodside. If you would like to sign up for PAR, you can download the form from the General Council website, United, uh, -church unitedchurch.ca, uh, and, um, and we can help you to fax that form to the General Council. There's a donate button on our website, and um, uh, an announcement from the Finance Committee. I'll just read this from Mike Nickerson, who chaired our last Finance Committee meeting. Um, as we continue to f face the uh, outbreak of COVID-19 and are dealing with the current restrictions around social gatherings, it has been recognized that not everyone is able to get to the church to drop off offering envelopes or other donations. A group of volunteers have offered to provide a contactless pickup for those folks. So if anyone is in need of any assistance in that, in that way, please contact the church office and uh, arrangements will be made for that pickup. And just as I started to, to make that announcement, I saw Mike's, uh, Mike's face pop up in front of me here. So I hope I did okay, Mike. Give me a thumbs up if, you th if there's anything else. Good? <laughs> okay. And just a reminder of the ways in which we are continuing to try and be community together um, on, online uh, there. If you have a young adult in your household, 16-ish and, and older, um, you know, who would like to join us for that chat, please do. Monday to Friday, share and care. Uh, tomorrow, there won't be a share and care uh, at 11. We're going to take a, take a holiday tomorrow for the holiday weekend. Uh, Tuesday morning Bible study is, is, is focusing just on scripture, uh, and uh, it's a great conversation. Um, Chris Elizabeth began a weekly prayer time, uh, not last week, but the week before. So if you'd like to gather for a few minutes, that's 7 o'clock. On Thursday night, you can send uh, either Chris Elizabeth or myself, well, it would be myself this week as Chris Elizabeth is off, um, or through the office a prayer request. We'll spend some time in prayer between 7 and 7.30 on a Thursday night. Members of the choir. Uh, kids chat 6.30. That's one of the great places that we've been meeting, and, uh, um, and uh, you'll see some of the, some of the kids uh, from, uh, from the church as part of the children's time this morning. And then, of course, Saturday mornings, mom meetup. So those are the ways that. And if you have an idea for a community uh, chat thing that you'd like to host through the church's uh, Zoom, 
do let me know uh, and uh, we can help to help to arrange that. Those are announcements. Anyone have an announcement they need to share, please raise your hand. So as we gather this morning, um, I'll uh, invite us to share in the acknowledgement of place. As we gather in this place, we remember with gratitude that we live and worship on lands that are by law, the unceded territory of the Wabanaki people, predominantly the lands of the Mi'kmaq, Maliseet, and Passamaquoddy. And we acknowledge the Mi'kmaq people and their stewardship of this land throughout the ages. Coal Harbor Woodside United Church is a safe place for all people who got to worship regardless of gender identity, race, creed, age, ability, sexual back, cultural background, or sexual orientation. Here. Charles is going to lead us, and I believe all of us will see. And as we uh, have lit our candles, I brought up from the sanctuary this morning the candle that we have, we normally uh, light during service that honors those who are uh, members of our armed forces, uh, first responders, and, and uh, particularly frontline workers in these days. And so we'll add this candle to, uh, to our gatherings each Sunday morning to think about those and to remember and honor them who are working so hard, especially in these times. Uh, to keep us safe in so many ways. And may we, when we encounter those frontline workers, may we remember and give them thanks personally when, when we do. <clears throat> I see Joanne and Aiden, would you be willing, I, cause, just because you're right here first on my screen, would you be willing to lead the, the okay. They're gonna lead, Joanne and Aiden Shears are going to, I'm gonna unmute you here. What am I doing? God be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to God. Let, Let us give, give thanks for the goodness, goodness of God. We give our thanks and praise to God. Thanks very much. On the fly here this morning. So I invite us to join our hearts together uh, in prayer this morning. And I found this prayer at Worship Words. <clears throat> Let us pray. Loving God, who conceived life, embraces individuality, welcomes everyone, celebrates diversity, encourages unity, offers serenity, gifts simplicity, lavishes compassion. We worship you. Living Christ, who breathes our air, walks our streets, feels our pain, sheds tears, enjoys company, bubbles with laughter, holds our hands, we worship you. Gentle spirit, who strengthens fragile spirits, shelters the suffering, respires life and hope, transforms all sorrow, binds broken hearts, sets captives free, we worship you. Beautiful Trinity of love, for your presence in our lives, 
for your comfort and company, for shaking us out of tired routines and calling us ever to follow you, then blessing our journey with unexpected discoveries, expanding our horizons, tendering endless encouragement, and traveling with us. We worship you. Amen. <clears throat> Sing again. <clears throat> A reading this morning from the first letter of Corinthians, the first letter to the church in Corinth, reading at chapter 13. If I speak with tongues of mortals and angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions, and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not ir irritable, oh, sorry, it is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. But as for prophecy, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For now we know in part. 
and we prophesy only in part. But when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. And when I became an adult, I put away childish things. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part. Then I will know fully even as I have been known fully. And now faith, hope, and love abide these three, and the greatest of these is love. May we in the church hear what the Spirit is speaking to us through these readings of our scriptures. This morning I have a video, uh, as I said, from uh, our kids' chat on Friday night, and some of our children shared their thoughts on love, and I will share that with you now. So this is Reverend Michael, and I'm here with uh, the young people from Kids Chat. And tonight we're talking a little bit about love, like Paul was talking to the church in Corinth about love. And the, the children here tonight are going to share a little bit about love. And so uh, I, I'll go first and I'll say that I think love is when we treat uh, each other with kindness and that we are welcoming to everybody who comes to Cole Harbor Woodside United Church just like we are. I believe love is compassion and creativity for others and showing that you care. And Maddie. I think love is about being nice to each other and helping people. And do you want to hold up your sign? That's a good way to show love. Can you see it? To pull it back just a little bit more. Like that? Further and hold it up a bit higher. Beautiful. Thank you, Maddie. And did you have something else you wanted to show? Yeah. And a heart. That's lovely. Okay. There, oh. there you go, Sophie. Um, I would say love is about always caring and being nice to everybody and make sure everybody's going before you are. Can you hold up? What you were holding it before? Oh. And what are the hearts made of? Um, tissue paper and cardstock. Well, thank you all for sharing your thoughts about love. And we're going to share. You couldn't see, but Maddie's sign said, uh, Canada is strong, and it had a great big heart. So, <clears throat> a little little bitch there. For that. So we're going to sing again, and uh, we're going to sing like a rock. And I'm going to invite us, if you want to try it, uh, to uh, to do the action. So it's like a rock, like a rock. God is under our feet, like the starry night sky. God is over our head, like the sun on the horizon. God is ever before. Like the river runs the ocean, our home is in God evermore. So let's give that a
Thanks very much, Charles and Audrey again. <clears throat> Pause with me for a moment of prayer. Oh God, may the words of my lips and the meditations of all of our hearts find their source in you, our rock and our strength. Amen. So I wanted to share with you a paraphrase of First Corinthians that I found a number of years ago. If our church building and sanctuary are the most beautiful delights to the eye, but we do not have love, we are a store window mannequin. If we have the most beautiful music that inspires and lifts the soul to new heights, but do not have love, we are simply white noise. If we have the most inspired preaching, but do not have love, we sound like the grown-ups in a Charlie Brown cartoon. If we have youth programming that can engage the most disinterested teen, but, not, but do not have love, we are really just another game of Pong. Love means we disagree, but we talk disagreements through. Love means that we love without degree. Love means letting go of old hurts and not using them against each other later. Love means that we are inclusive of all, not just the ones we tell God who God should love. Now buildings, programs, and love uh, abide, and love remains, and the greatest of these is love. When the reading came up from 1 Corinthians this week, I went to look for that paraphrase again. When this pandemic forced us into dis social distancing and closing our church buildings, it made many of us wonder how and if the church would survive if we couldn't come together to worship in the building and in physical community. Reverend Christa Elizabeth and I tried to remind us that the church is really not empty. The church is deployed, we said. We are in our homes and to some extent in our communities. And as individuals and as a church, we're still showing God's love and we are offering the care and comfort of Christ in the ways that we best can. I think particularly of the, de the dedicated volunteers of our food bank who are continuing to come on the first and third Sundays of each, uh, Tuesdays of each month who are feeding the hungry in our community. We can't go to hospitals and nursing homes, but we're still reaching out to those who are sick and imprisoned in their homes while we are apart. We worship together and we gather for share and care and prayer time, online Bible study, choir chats and kids chats, moms meetups and young adult conversations and in so many other ways that are unseen with the number of people in our churches who are continuing to pick up the phone and call their neighbor or who are offering to go and get groceries or pick up things for those who are stuck at home and can't get out. Even in these strange times, we are still the church and the body of Christ is still at work. I'm sure like, a, like a lot of us, I know I was happy to see some of the restrictions, the tighter restrictions lifted a little bit this week. We were able to have those close familial bubbles now. Uh, beaches are open for us to walk on and enjoy. And as these restrictions continue to be lifted slowly and prudently, the stark reality is that it still may be some time before we are able to come together here in the building. We will continue to need resilient and innovative ways to find it, ways to reach out to even more people in our community, the faith community and the wider community. How will we continue to live Christ's light as Cole Harbor Woodside United Church? Paul was addressing a community in turmoil as well in the reading today. 
they weren't dealing with a pandemic, but it was a community that was trying to figure out how they were going to live Christ's light within the church and within the community of Corinth. The church in Corinth seems to have been one that was very diverse, not too dissimilar from ourselves. There were older and younger people. There were those who had been with the church since its earliest days, those who were new to the community, those who had a great sense of financial security and those whose finances were uncertain those who could bring much to the community and those who could simply bring themselves and what they could offer. Paul told them that they needed to start looking less at what separated them and more at what was truly holding them together, love, God's love. Love, he says, needs to be the ethic out of which we do everything. He tells them it needs to be the first nature we see to walk as our Christian lives. It needs to be the primary factor for how we are together in Christian community. We can't live in isolation and preservation within the walls and expect the world to see Christ's love in us. Christ's love must be seen in the way in which we live and care for one another. We're called to live Christ's love outside the church building. By this, Jesus said, they will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. So we have an opportunity here right now. Sure, it seems like a disability, but it's actually an opportunity. We have an opportunity during this time of separation to press a sort of reset button. Perhaps we can look to God for some ways to help shake us out of the, the way we've always done it sort of ideology. We need to put some thinking aside and open our ears, our eyes, and our hearts to hear God's spirit beckoning us to new ways. Perhaps we have discovered that there is a need to not only depend on a few people, but the work of the church must be spread to many, within and without of the traditional circles of the go-to people in our congregations. I've seen people who have not been deeply involved step up and do things uh, with the church community that we have not seen before, and it gives me hope. And those people who have felt burnt out by so much of the work that they have been offering for so long, Maybe they will have had a chance to rest a little bit and come back when we are allowed with renewed energy and fresh thought and fresh eyes. That will help guide us into the days, months, and years to come. Maybe some of you sitting there right now at home are thinking about how you might bring gifts and talents that you have and how you can share them. Maybe you would like to offer uh, a weekly encouragement. Maybe you could tell a children's story and record it with the children on a Friday night. Maybe you could record it and it could go on the United Churches for Dartmouth Facebook group. Maybe in this time of social isolation, you have been reflecting on your spirituality and your spiritual life. Maybe you could record that at home with your phone or, or your tablet or your computer. And that could be our weekly reflection. Maybe you have ideas for our children, our youth. Maybe you have ideas for our website. Maybe this has given you the time to think about stepping into a role in our church community, board, or ministry. Maybe you have some expertise that can help us to overcome some of the flaws of being an online community like we saw this morning. Christ is still calling us to be the church. Christ is still calling each and every one of us to live out Christ's light 
and to live into God's future. We can't see what's truly ahead. It truly is a mirror dimly. But we can still trust that when we see face to face, it will be the eyes and face of God we will be looking into. It will be the faces and eyes of our brothers and sisters of Cold Harbor Woodside United Church from whom we've been separated. Paul told the church in Corinth that no matter what has happened in the past, good or ill, now is the time of God. They and we need to listen to where God is calling us to be. Let all things be done for the building up of all people. May we hear God's prophetic message and God's prophetic voice in one another in these strange times. Let us open our hearts to hearing Christ's call to live, to serve, and to love. We give our thanks and praise to God this day. May it be so. Amen.
Thank you, Charles. <clears throat> in the confusion this morning, uh, Cindy wasn't able to be here with us uh, to offer a moment for mission and service, and I haven't seen anything from uh, Susanna and didn't get a chance to grab anything myself. Uh, but uh, uh, all of the work of our church, both here in our community and around our world, is supported by the work of mission and service. And so uh, we encourage all to make to make mission and service giving a part of our regular offering of church. Let us join then together our hearts and our minds together in prayer. And as a response uh, to the prayer, uh, these prayers for our world, our nation, and our community, I invite you to respond with the phrase when I offer the words good shepherd, if you would respond, guide us in love and pray with me. Good Shepherd, we hear the cries and joys of your people, and we lift them up to you. Receive our prayers for our world. We pray for those around the world who are struggling and suffering under this global pandemic. We pray for those who are finding it hard to provide for family, the basic necessities of food and shelter, clothing and water. We pray for those who are seeking so diligently a way of controlling and perhaps even vaccinating us against this disease. We pray for those who continue to serve around the world in the front lines of care and support. We pray for those who do not feel the peace and quiet of social separation, where in their nations, violence and war continue. Good shepherd, guide us in love. We hear the cries and joys of your people and lift them up to you. Receive the prayers for our nation. We pray for our leadership, for our prime minister and federal government, for the provincial and territorial governments in our land, that they might make wise and prudent decisions, that they would look to the needs of those who are suffering, that they might find compassion in their hearts and that they might help us to unify our efforts to care for and love one another. Good Shepherd, guide us in love. We hear the cries and joys of your people and lift them up to you. Receive our prayers for our community and our family. We pray for those in our community this day who are struggling. Parents who are in need of support and relief. Young ones who don't fully understand the reasons why they can't go and play with friends and family. Our elders who wish they could be with us. For those in nursing homes and hospitals those who desperately seek a time of human touch and companionship who are unable so to do. Think of those who are the marginalized in our society, those who are grieving this day. And we pray for those who are, yes, still welcoming new light into their midst. Good Shepherd, guide us in love. We hear the cries and joys of your people and lift them up to you. Receive the prayers for our church. We pray for those who are on our prayer list this day, those who are in hospital and in nursing home, those who are struggling, those who are lonely and in need of companionship and to reach out among, 
beyond ourselves. Move our hearts and our lives, O oh God, that we might ensure that our whole church family feels your love and your touch through our work. We think of the board, the unified board and the committees and groups of the church who are still seeking to offer Christ's care and comfort in our community. Good Shepherd, guide us in love. We hear the cries and joys of your people and lift them up to you. Receive this day the prayers of our hearts. Good Shepherd, guide us in your love. We hear the cries of your people, Eternal One. Show us how to be your hands, feet, and voice in our world. Receive our prayers, spoken and unspoken, lifted to you, and wrapped together in the words of Jesus' prayer, as we say together, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We'll sing again. Love is the time. As we go out into the world, uh, Krista Elizabeth wanted me to let you folks know um, that on the bulletin, you probably saw a name that maybe some of you didn't recognize in the prayer list, uh, Henry, sorry. Um, got a good memory, but it's short. Harry, England, uh, and that's uh, Krista Elizabeth's dad, and so, uh, Crystal Elizabeth has gone to Ontario to be with her mom and her dad uh, at this point in time. And so she would greatly appreciate and thank uh, you all for prayers of care and support uh, as, they, as they are walking through uh, an illness with, with her dad at this time. So uh, just do remember her uh, in, our, in your prayers this coming, this coming week. And so as we leave this time, we go knowing that in spite of the fact that we haven't been together in one place, we have been in each other's company. We have been surrounded by God and God's light. We have been upheld and lifted by God's spirit, moving us in our world. 
And as we go, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us, those we love and those we find it hard to love, now and forever. Amen.